at Next24 with Richard Soroder, none other than our chief evangelist at Google Cloud. Richard, thank you so much for being here with thank us. Thank you so much for inviting me. Just to kick it off, yeah. we do Next every year. What's your favorite part of coming to Next? What really excites you about this? I mean, selfishly, it's I'm not just pandering. It's seeing people like you and the team. Like We have a big team and we're all over the world. and. This is that one rare chance we get to all be in the same room at the same time and hang out together. So I love all the people coming here, but they're second to uh, the team. You hear that team? We're number one in his heart. So like I said, the keynote was amazing. You, you know, maybe I'm biased, but I feel like every year they get better. You and Chloe did an amazing job Thank hosting. You. Really inspirational. Yeah. Uh, makes me want to be a better developer and developer advocate. Me so too. you kicked it off strong with uh, Gemini 1.5 uh, Pro Vision, yep. and you showed how we can get insights from video, but also from huge databases. So can you share some of these amazing numbers that you talked about? Yeah, I mean, that huge context window we keep talking about, all these tokens I can pass in, just the idea of, and we could give it the 75 minute video we gave of last year's keynote, and actually get back details of who spoke when, and when did we show a demo, like, it's not just reading a transcript, it's actually understanding the video, which is amazing. So I just love this idea to be able to pass in so much code or giant documents or whatever it is, or one of those long emails our bosses sends us, it can process the actual whole thing. I think it's pretty cool to be able to think about not having to over-architect these really complicated solutions. Maybe it's just one Gemini call, and I don't know, we should be aiming for simplicity. And I think I'm seeing more and more of that, which is great. Yes, I love how you talked about simplifying the, the complexity of Gen AI, which is amazing. And I know, selfishly also, that's a great feature that I love to use when there's a huge code base and you just need a quick summary, right? Yeah, exactly. Who can process all that stuff? I just summarized, give me the gist. That's all we need. Yeah. Gemini is changing the way that developers deliver software. And you mentioned a few key ways in which that's happening, right? Better coding, better platforms, and better ops. Right. Can you talk to me a little bit about each of those? Yeah, the better coding is a good part of A, how do I just, again, build, how do I complete my code, add better tests, like just better quality, can I ship it faster, can I get better value from that? So I think we saw a lot of that in the keynote with cool frameworks like Next.js and calling it the Gemini endpoints. This isn't just Google tech. I want everybody using all kinds of languages using this. So that's the exciting part is we're not really a uh, homogenous vibe here for developers, like use your favorite IDE, use your favorite language. I think that's great. So you need the coding part, but then there's a big platform piece. Like, I need, how am I going to serve up models? What are the right models? How do I do this retrieval augmented generation stuff? Like, how do we do that really, really well? We see, we saw some great examples in the keynote, all the breakouts of, yeah, let's just make platforms better. Let's have them be smarter. Let's have them be easier managed. We saw demonstrations from uh, the folks on GKE side of make it easier to run GKE with AI, like help us understand what's going on. I love that. And then, yeah, the ops part, troubleshooting is still not easy and now we're just generating more data. So if I can use AI to sift through piles of logs or figure out troubleshooting, you and I know if, if the favorite site you go to is offline, you just go to another one. So I got to get people back online quick. So it seems like having AI, it's making the dev better, the platform better, the ops better, and we're only getting started, yeah. which is great. Yeah, it's awesome. And two of my favorite things that you mentioned too is Gemini Code Assist, which again, I use daily almost yeah, now. Yeah, me too. And uh, Gemini Cloud Assist, which is also. I'm excited about that. I mean, that's a, it's one thing to do ops. It's another to do ops that understands you. Like in our example, we're saying, hey, who, who broke the firewall and it was me? <laughs> I don't like being blamed publicly, but at least you have better context versus just like generically, here's what you could look at. So yeah, that personalization, that's the secret to this next stage of AI. Nice, yeah, I totally agree. And you learned your lesson, right? You're not gonna break the firewall no. again. Yeah, not in front of my <laughs> boss, no. <laughs> Wonderful, okay. So another really interesting thing that's super exciting is Gemini in BigQuery and all of the amazing features that come with that. You can build apps and data agents with multimodal AI. And I've actually tried this out as well. So what's your favorite part of that? Like talk through us a little, talk us through that a little bit. Yeah, the most powerful part is it's all in one environment, like that BigQuery Studio environment where I'm not only writing queries, I'm getting it generating queries, it's doing the multimodal, I can query against images or text. I'm not bouncing between different things. Even we showed continuous queries where you can keep running this and BigQuery will actually host your query, just keep running it and checking. Like that's super powerful stuff that back to the simplification, a few years ago, this was like 10 products. 
now we're sitting here going, maybe it's just one thing that just makes this easier. So I just love how BigQuery is becoming the center of this and making it easier to do really sophisticated things. Yeah, and I reiterate that it's helping devs deliver software more simply, quicker, and honestly, just in a more enjoyable way because of you know less context switching, things are being done for you, automation. Completely, a lot it's less so toil. Exciting. Exactly, and of course, you know something that's being talked about all the time now is rag. Yes. It's not just a towel that you clean your floors with. Retrieval augmented generation, of course, uh, it helps optimize the output of our LLMs. Can you give me a little deep dive into RAG and how are we imp using it with our LLMs? Yeah, I mean, I think when you see there's, I think, what, three ways people can make the output of a model better. You can give it better prompts, stuff more stuff in there and direct it. You can do fine tuning and actually take a model and like train it with your own data. That's expensive and can have its own thing. But instead, this retrieval augmented generation says, can I use the base model, but then dip into another data source to complement that input? So we're making it a little easier to say, yeah, give me a data source and we'll chunk it all up and handle it for you. And then when you make those queries, you have more trust in the output because it's actually looking up your data, complementing that with what it's looking at. So I think as people want to have trust in this, this can't just be a play thing. Like you and I will be so frustrated if everyone just uses Gen AI for fun and not to actually get to production. Yeah. Like I don't want to just use this in dev, I want to use this all the way. So you have to trust it though. And so the tools we've been doing, the support now across almost every Google Cloud database for vector search and things like that, super powerful. We're not saying it's only one way to do it, there's a few ways, but we're making it simple. And I love what you said about increasing that trust, right? Because that's Has what this be. does. Yep. Make sure that you can trust the answers that you're getting just a little bit more. Yeah. I know that you love all your children equally, right? All of these announcements are amazing. Yeah. Do you have a secret favorite, not so secret? I mean, from this week's things, I am excited a lot about the Code Assist Cloud Assist piece. I think there's a bringing AI to how we develop and operate software there's so much room to make this better. Like you and I still, and at least I pretend to be a developer still, like any assistance I can get where it lets me focus on the fun parts of it, and I don't have to do some of the other pieces. I care about the other pieces, but somebody smarter than me, in this case a robot, should be doing some of this for me or helping me troubleshoot. So I think unveiling Cloud Assist, showing how Code Assist is now getting smarter, having be able more context, it's going to be such a game changer right now. I'm, I'm excited for what the next 10 years of software looks like. Yes, I totally agree. It really does make our lives easier as developers. I've been using it and it's so funny because sometimes I'm doing something and we'll forget that we have this at our fingertips now, right? Because it's new and exciting. So we'll say, oh, did you try using Code Assist for that? And say, oh, right, let me check that out. So Well, that context switching, I mean, when you and I, we go back and I have to go jump to search results. I have to go jump to a weird blog post. I got to do Stack Overflow. Those are all great sources, but it gets me out of my flow. And so we, I think, are obsessed of keeping people in a flow state, so you just do better work longer. I'm, I'm for that. Yeah, exactly, and it feels more like play instead yeah. of work, right? This should be fun. So this is the fun. best time to be doing software. We should be having a blast with this. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's a pleasure, as always. You're welcome. And your dev keynote was, of course, recorded, so make sure to check that out. And keep watching, because we're going to have a lot more great interviews and information about talks coming at you. Love it. Thanks, Debbie.